even as a cadet at West Point, I was fascinated in leadership and the study of leadership. Um, uh, I had a tactical officer there that just was a huge positive example, and I was wondering what makes him so successful and others not. And so pursued that in, in terms of more of a formal study while I was there in an undergraduate uh, program, which later I ended up being selected to go back and teach in that department for that particular course. So I was sent off to get a master's degree in uh, organizational psychology. And so it furthered my uh, study and appreciation for the complexity of understanding how organizations function, uh, how leaders function, how leaders are developed, um, and those kinds of, of aspects. Um, and so I got an opportunity to teach cadets at, at that point uh, as a young captain and then uh, saw some real value in trying to provide structure and, and uh, some kind of um, a sense to how to uh, a framework to how to make sense out of things that you experience out there in the environment that would increase the probability that it'd be more successful. Um, and so I sort of gained a passion uh, for it in, in that even further and then was actually then called back later on as a, a promotable major, a lieutenant colonel to serve in the Pentagon at the leadership division. And so then really got involved at the policy level with trying to figure out, okay, how do we change behavior? How do we shape behavior? How do we facilitate things for leaders uh, to achieve um, the de desired outcomes that were, at that case, at, at that point in time, was important to the chief of staff of the Army, then General Reimer. The other passion, uh, the aspect of that, is also teaching. and so. You know, combining that with what I've studied and trying to prepare these students for what they're going to end up going into, I think, uh, you know, is a nice blend of, of what uh, sort of gets me motivated and, and gets me excited about coming here to work every day. I mean, obviously, we're focused at the strategic level, and I think, you know, having uh, studied it as an undergraduate, uh, then in a graduate program, uh, taught it uh, at two different levels, and then experienced it at various levels uh, in the Army. Uh, it, it's readily apparent to me that strategic leadership and, and functioning effectively at this level is different. And, and I think it requires a transition of students from what they may have become accustomed to and very good at to something new that they're going to have to learn and, and adapt accordingly to be able to be effective in that environment. I think the best opportunity I had was when I actually had to go out and be a part of it um, as, a, uh, as an instructor then serving in Afghanistan, which really was, there was a very confusing, ambiguous, very complex environment out there and trying to provide some degree of structure to it to sort of help you work your way through that um, and try to make sense of, of what was happening around you. I think I found I, I related back to the curriculum where you're teaching here as very effective ways for organizing my thinking, uh, for uh, helping me develop approaches to try to solve problems, and to help uh, the Afghan official that I was supporting at that point in time in, in providing advice to him. And so I think this curriculum, uh, having actually gone out and trying to apply it um, and use it as a means of making sense of what I was doing out there was extremely uh, valuable to me and made me a better instructor of trying to relate things back in the classroom that I think will be actual situations or conditions they'll likely face uh, upon graduation. Well, the other day we're doing strategic decision making lesson. We pulled chapters out of Obama's wars, Woodward's book, on uh, the, the time period in which uh, President Obama was reconsidering strategy changes uh, with regards to Iraq and Afghanistan. And, and I think that becomes very real to them when they see uh, real life situations uh, at the strategic level that they may actually face, either in the role of the leader themselves some years down the road, or in many cases just as the advisor immediately after they graduate. Uh, so how do they provide good advice? How do they know how to work and function effectively in that arena? In the seminar dynamic that we have, where you have 16 different students, uh, some from different parts of the world, others from different agencies uh, or organizations within the U.S. government, uh, I think is extremely helpful in them being able to integrate the different perspectives and seeing different points of view collectively in the group that helps broaden their horizon and, and in some cases validate some of the uh, challenges that we're presenting in these cases. They'll come back and say, 
Some of them have already served at the strategic level and, and looking in hindsight, sometimes the course material helps make better sense to them of the things they just experienced. Um, and so that sort of helps validate uh, in the classroom uh, the concepts, the experiences, the exercises, the events we're trying to expose them to, uh, and then what reading we're trying to use to help prepare them for that. And as much as it can be demanding, uh, and we do put them through some pretty hard paces here uh, through the academic year, uh, it, it really does make a difference. My uh, charge to them would be embrace this year, uh, use it, leverage it for everything you, you can. Uh, there's great opportunities here. We've got a great experience, a great curriculum, great faculty, uh, great opportunities for them to experience and learn this year, and I hope they take advantage of it and benefit from it uh, this year.